Hi, my name is John Evans and I'm a professor here at the Australian National University where I lecture in plant science at the Research School of Biology. One of the courses that I lecture into um, shows students what cells are made of and we utilise microscopes to study that. Now, as a child, one of the wonderful things to discover is using a, a magnifying glass and being able to see things that you can't see with your naked eye. And the reason a magnifying glass works is because suddenly it enlarges um, the, whatever you're looking at and you can see detail that you can't normally see. So how did this come about? Well, maybe 400 years ago, um, Galileo was inventing a telescope which he used to look at stars, be able to resolve the night sky and see stars that we can't see with the naked eye. And if you turn a telescope around the wrong way and look down it, and make a few little changes, suddenly you can use it to look at small objects. And Galileo actually used this to look at a fly and discovered that the surface of the fly is covered with fur or lots of little hairs. Now, uh, a microscope um, can be developed from combining glass lenses and the light passing through those lenses allows you to um, see small objects. And about 400 years ago in England, a guy called Hooke um, used a compound microscope, which is two sets of lenses joined together, and uh, he was a very good artist, and he was looking at things like fleas, and he could draw beautifully detailed pictures of what he saw. And he published a book with these, and suddenly the public got really excited to suddenly discover what these annoying little creatures that were on their dogs and on their own skin causing itching really look like up close. And they're quite frightening when you see them, all these hairs and the claws that dig into your skin and make you itchy. In this book that Hook um, produced, he described how to make a microscope. And in Holland at that time, there was a, a, a man whose business was selling cloth who was really interested in how fine the threads were that w went to make up the material. And he was very interested to see if he could use a microscope to look in detail at the fineness of his cloth. And he found that the microscope that Hooke described uh, only allowed you to magnify um, to a, a, a limited extent. And so he started developing his own type of microscope, uh, which was a much simpler design, but allowed a much greater magnification. So this man's name was Lewin Hook, and he uh, took information from Hook's um, micrographia book, for example, slicing pieces of cork very, very thinly, and um, made his observations with his microscope and sent those observations to the Royal Society in London. At first, uh, the letters, when they were received, there was a lot of scepticism that you could actually really see that much detail because previously this had been um, never described before. And in fact, uh, the fellows of the Royal Society were so sceptical, they uh, sent a delegation over to Holland to actually see for themselves what, what, um, what was being written about. The, the microscope's actually quite, that Lewinhook used is quite difficult to use because it's very small and we'll show you that in, a, in the next video. But essentially, the people that visited uh, Lewinhook confirmed that he was actually able to see what was described. And then there followed something like 50 years of correspondence from Lewinhook to um, the Royal Society in London, where he presented the findings as they unfolded.